Cuando yo era niño, mi escuela solo fue un sexto grado. Nada más. Nosotros no pudimos estudiar porque tuvimos la, mi mamá vivió una situación eh, bien desfavorable. No podía ella darnos una educación secundaria y era muy difícil con la alimentación. Hacía nuestros cuadernos de papel, compraba papel, ella costuraba los cuadernos. Pero de esa manera nosotros pues hicimos posible un sexto grado. If you go around any first grade classroom or really any community throughout Honduras and ask kids what they want to be when they grow up, you're going to hear so many different dreams. And then when you walk around to houses and you see people in their 20s and 30s and 40s, um, it can be heartbreaking to see what opportunities they didn't have as a result of a lack of employment, a lack of education, which all kind of play into each other. Right? Because we have lack of jobs, which leads to lack of education, which then kind of continues that generational cycle of poverty. Providing that education really is ultimately the best and most sustainable vehicle for community transformation. Mandar un niño a una escuela bilingüe significa un montón de dinero de transporte. Las escuelas son 3.000, 4.000 empiras de, de la mensualidad. Un padre, un padre pobre no puede hacer esto. So ultimately, Becca exists because we want to create more opportunities for educational access. Our founder, Jamie Koppel, um, moved to Honduras in 2001-2002. And at that point in time, she didn't necessarily have a clear vision of what it was that she wanted to do, but she knew that she felt passionate about education. Estuvo ella con nosotros uh, compartiendo aquí en la casa, familiarizándose cada día más. And what happened was, after a couple years, um, she was finding that she wasn't sure if Cofradia was the right place for her to stay located. And there's a really powerful story about 18 parents from the community coming to her late at night, knocking on her door, and saying, Jamie, we really want to talk to you. Tuvo que decirnos a nosotros que se iba, pero nosotros le dijimos, Jamie, usted no se puede ir. Nosotros necesitamos Siempre el apoyo de Beca, nosotros vamos a construir una escuela. And they said, we actually believe in this vision, we want to see this happen, and we are the ones who are going to find the land um, and put our own sweat and blood and money into really building the school and making that vision a reality. Oh no, Mr. Fajardo, eh, hacer una escuela no, no es fácil. Nosotros veníamos manejando, veníamos en el carro, en este carro viejo, y luego Jamie, nosotros tenemos el deseo de, de abrir otra escuela. So that school is called San Jerónimo Bilingual School and it's our first school. Um, it goes all the way from kinder, which actually is um, preschool, through ninth grade. And we graduate 25 students every year and those students go on into colegio and, and following that into university. Mi hijo, pues, Willito, fue, es hijo de la San Jerónimo. Eso fue lo que yo quise desde cuando él nació. Porque ya lo que digo yo, lo que mi mamá no me dio a mí, yo se lo voy a dar a mi hijo, no sé de qué manera. Pero yo conseguí mi dinero, hice todas mis cosas. Con estas máquinas yo gradué a Wilito. Ahorita pues ya dos años también de educación de Fabiola en San Pedro, igual con las mismas máquinas. Y aquí estamos. Estamos eh, eh, siempre al pie, de, al pie de la batalla, es una batalla. Since the school is a community project that really is led by Hondurans within the community, it's critical for every family that's involved in the school to be investing in the school. Um, some of that is through money, some of that is through helping with um, the Glorieta, some of it is through helping with events or through cleaning. And that's been the, the case for all of our three schools, that each one of them has happened as a result of the community's passion for education, for educational access, and the community's passion um, to see further opportunities for their kids and um, to continue this move forward towards community growth and national growth, ultimately. La primer puerta que se le puso a la escuela la regalé yo. Compré el material con mi dinero 
y con mis manos la hice y la fui a instalar porque era la puerta donde estaba Fabiola en preparatoria. Y ya compré ese carro y ahí nos íbamos 21, 22 hasta 23, íbamos en ese carro para la escuela. Hicimos muchas cosas, pero lo mucho que hicimos fue tan poco por lo que recibimos. ¿Entiendes? What does success look like? Definitely success for us looks like students graduating from our schools and going on to university and finishing university degrees and returning to their community and investing in community change. Um, but also on that same level, success looks like for us volunteers going back to the U.S. and thinking, how does my experience here in Honduras play out in the rest of my life? How does it cause me to really think about economics and think about gender inequalities and think about globalization in ways that are different? And not only think about them in a way that is different, but engage them in a way that is different and talk about them in a way that is different. And I think so often about, I've heard before, that you kind of need to plug into a community for at least 20 years, for a generation, before you even start to see change. And it's not that that change is over after one gener generation, but really just to start to see the change happens after one generation, when we start to see some of our prepa kids graduating from university and coming back as doctors and lawyers. So what does it look like to really see that vision come to pass? Um, ultimately, I think it starts with people. It starts and it ends with people. It starts with people who are willing to say yes. Um, to something that's bigger than themselves and to something that will push them far outside of their comfort zones um, and will give them a challenge that they've never faced. Um, for people to say, yes, I want to be a part of the beauty of those relationships and yes, I want to um, receive what the communities have to offer and yes, I want to eat beans almost every day and yes, I want to sweat beyond what I've ever experienced before in my life. And yes, I want to try what it's like to take a bucket shower. And yes, I want to learn how to dance um, Latin dances. And yes, I want to learn totally new music. And yes, I want to hang out with families for five hours on a Sunday when I'm only tracking about 10% of their conversation until I suddenly realize one day that I'm actually tracking 80% of their conversation and able to laugh at their jokes. Um, yeah, I think it starts with a yes. It starts with saying families here matter and they matter the same way that my communities at home matter. Um, and I want to know those kids um, and I want to see their lives changed just the same way that I want to see my own life changed. Um, I think that's what it takes. <laughs>